taking their skills that they've built up and finding some of the best natural gas deposits in the world, applying that to this helium search that we're on. Hi, welcome to Global Energy Show's 5x5. Five five. I'm Rachel Gregory. Developing untapped resources is helping to diversify our energy sector. And one of those resources that is taking off is helium. Today, we are chatting with Chris Baker, CEO of Avanti Energy, a company focused on the exploration, development, and production of helium across Western Canada and the United States. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Great to be here. Chris, tell us about Avanti Energy. What do you do in the world of helium? We're a junior explorer in the in the world of helium. In the past, helium often came as a byproduct of natural gas. Uh, in the last few years, there's been sort of price incentives to go out and explore for helium as a primary target. We've taken a group of uh, seasoned oil and gas professionals and uh, repurposed their skills to the helium market. So. We're uh, early days now. We're assembling a pretty good land package right now, a good portfolio, and uh, we hope to be drilling in the next few months. Avanti focuses on extracting helium from non-hydrocarbon sources throughout Western Canada and Montana. Could you tell us more about this? Helium is uh, generally a byproduct of the natural decay of uranium and thorium, and that's found deep in the earth. And then helium is a, is a very small and light molecule, and it wants to rise and find its way to atmosphere and, and to outer space. And so... As it rises, it, it passes through various strata in the Earth's crust and uh, follows little pathways. And, and there are certain places where it accumulates, where there's a, a really tight layer of rock. It'll accumulate underneath that, very similar to the natural gas. Uh, we apply our geology and geophysics knowledge of regional structures and drill for it in a, in a, in a manner exactly the same as natural gas. But what's different is that we don't have the, the large database that we do of oil and gas wells. There's not that many tests for helium directly and not, not that many test wells to the depths that we're looking at for. So we're redeploying those skills that we have. We've got some of the best people in the industry working for us. Very proud of our team. We're taking their skills that they've built up and finding some of the best natural gas deposits in the world, applying that to this helium search that we're on. And we're very excited about our future. We've, we think we've put together some, some really interesting geologic models and link that to our land acquisition. Helium has been added to Canada's critical mineral list. What does this mean for the helium industry in Canada? It basically highlights a need for the country and in the strategic direction of a country it gives them that impetus to remove barriers where there are any to enact encouraging legislation and regulation to encourage activity so it's early days it just happened in the last few months and it also happened in the u.s as well there's recognition on both sides of the border that this is a critical element for a lot of high tech the fact that it's on that list will help us a lot if we have to approach government for some assistance there has been a recent surge in Alberta as helium prices have been rising. What does this mean in Alberta and how can investors take advantage? A lot of the things we're good at, a lot of the things we have basically can be redeployed in this industry and that's very positive. What makes it unique in a way is that it's our activity level is completely independent from the oil and gas price cycle. We can take all those skills and equipment and just work in a completely independent fashion. So it's a little more steady level of activity for the industry as a whole and an exciting frontier, I think, for our professionals. Canada has committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and achieving net zero by 2050. How can helium help with that? A lot of the growth areas are, are on the high tech side. Things as, as basic or as common these days as se uh, semiconductors for computer chips are, or they require a fair amount of helium to make and, and fiber optics. So there's the controls for, you know, the new power grids and, and the, you know, that need to be installed for green power. But, you know, the next step past that are, are interesting things. We've heard recently that Tesla is using it to test the water tightness of their batteries, you know, kind of down the road a bit, fusion reactors work and we can get across the technological hurdles there. They use helium to cool the fusion reactors as well. And uh, so liquid helium as, as one of the lowest uh, points of liquefaction, at lowest temperature points. So if you need to cool something that's super, super hot to get it down, you helium's a great product for that. If we can get across the line on fusion technology, they're going to need an awful lot of helium to keep those reactors uh, operating. Uh, purging the atmosphere out of a, a manufacturing situation for leak testing. And a lot of the really high tech stuff that we look at right now, physics seems to operate very differently at ultra cold temperatures. Things like quantum computing only work when you when you get these ultra cold temperatures applied to them. You know, an application of computing power might solve a lot of our energy problems questions as well. We're kind of supportive to a lot of high tech, if not directly part of it in 
what you see in your hands day to day, you may not be exposed to the helium itself, but everything that led to that point has a helium story to it. Thank you so much, Chris. It was great chatting with you about Avanti Energy and the helium industry. It's been my pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching this episode of Global Energy Show's 5x5 five five series. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give this video a like and a share. Thanks. We'll see you next week.